They lead early, 2 0. Home runs by Rodriguez and Zobrist. And Matt Moore back to work. Dustin Pedroia leads off. Ortiz to follow, then Mike Napoli. Last time up, Pedroia flew out to center field. Nobody that I can remember with the size that Pedroia generate more bat speed and more ability to hit the ball out of the ballpark than this guy who they've rewarded with the seven year contract and the heart and soul really of the Red Sox. He's the engine of this team. They need him to get on here and get something going. And a shot right back up the middle and there is the base hit. The Red Sox have been looking for their first of the game. A lot of this stuff is rooted in a lot of data as you know uh, there's a lot of different games involved in uh, different types of pitches etc. So a lot of this stuff is uh, choreographed from the dugout it's it's not beforehand we got great advanced guiding by our people upstairs and then the guys in the dugout here do a great job choreographing during the course of the game. Now the staff of general manager Andrew Friedman and the shifts are on for David Ortiz although with a man at first the Rays have to keep Zobrist Attached to the infield third. I was just watching Longoria, Brian, and he got Escobar's attention and let you now know that if a ground ball is hit to anybody on the right side, he'll take the throw at second for a double play. But a comebacker to the mound, he wanted Escobar to take it. Does make for some awkward double play opportunities. Ortiz does not run well. You have plenty of time on a ground ball. To right, Myers calling. Myers near the wall, and that one bounces up and out. That's a ground rule double. Myers thought that Jennings was behind him. Wow, what a huge mistake! He called for it the whole way. He waved him off, and so Jennings stopped. And then at the last second, Myers just stepped forward. Big moment here. We'll see if Moore, with two on behind him, can weave his way through it for the Rays. Meanwhile, the Red Sox trying to cash in. Napoli at the plate, second and third, nobody out. Moore struck out Napoli his first time up, back in the second. Oh, took a mighty hack. And Lobatone on his way for a quick chat. Should be an out and a runner at first. But Myers peeled off. Won't go down as an air. It goes as a ground rule double. Doesn't show up in the box score, but certainly a huge play early. And the crowd's letting him know about it right now. Chanting Myers. Matt Moore's consecutive scoreless inning streak against the Red Sox is in jeopardy here. He has 17 straight scoreless innings against Boston starting this inning. And the shutout against him, his first and only complete game of his career here at Fenway Park earlier this year. Well, at 0 and 2, now you change your thinking. Now you go for the strikeout. You try to make two killer pitches to get him swinging out of the zone. That changes the eye level. Not a big deal. Obviously, goes to 1 and 2. But when you're a guy like Moore, who is a strikeout pitcher, he can be a great neutralizer in a case like this, right, John? I mean, because he can get the strikeout and practically get out of the inning by himself. He can, but with the other thing that uh, the bugaboo that comes up, the wild pitches, you can also create some stress on your catcher and for the pitcher who knows he's thrown some to the backstop. Well, we saw that between innings. He threw two his last two pitches warming up bounced a good six feet in front of home plate. Or has a wild pitch today. Wild pitch Salta Lamaki in a second back in the second. 
Red Sox with two on in scoring position. And a one two to Napoli. Fouled away. And it seems a tick late still. If he had a good feel for his curveball. This would be the best time to throw it right off that pitch. If he could if he could start it in the strike zone and get it to the back foot. The hitter recognizing maybe fastball out of the hands. That would be the time to throw his breaking ball. He's gone high and in with the fastballs with two strikes. Rays, one of the great defensive teams in the major leagues, but a misplay has him in a spot of bother here. One ball, two strikes on Napoli. And a pop up. Zobris wants it. And there is the first out and a big one for Matt Moore, retiring Napoli. Well, Matt Moore quieting down this crowd at Fenway for the time being. Here is Johnny Gomes now, who lined out to left in the second inning. Took a diving catch, a forward dive by Sean Rodriguez. Second and third, one away. Well, the Red Sox have shown over the course of a game how patient they can be, work the count, great average ahead of the count, behind of the count. But one thing right here that was so important strikeout or pop up is really the only way you don't get that runner in and possibly move the runner over to third. There's still a ground ball away from making it a one run game and obviously a hit from tying it. But some pretty heavy swings the last two times looks like they were trying to go deep. Ones. Yep. And now in the air to left. That ball's well hit. Rodriguez. At the wall, it is up and it is off the wall. Pedroia scores. Ortiz right behind him. It's a double. Two runs are in. Johnny Gomes puts the Red Sox on the board. That was a good read by Ortiz. He knew it was either going to be gone or hit the wall. Standing at third base, scores easily. Two runs in on the Gomes double. All tied up here in the fourth. And Salta Lamacchia cut it a miss. The former Ray, Johnny Gomes. Watch Ortiz here bounce off second, but he had a good read near the back. He was something that was, like you said, John, either a homer or a double. I've seen enough of those. Salta Lamacchia. Still just one out. And that ball's in the air. Foul territory. Not a lot of room over there. And it'll end up in the seats. 0-2 on the Red Sox catcher. Myers had the misplay in right. Looked like he was camped under a fly ball to make a routine play on Ortiz. And inexplicably ran away from it as if somebody called him off. It certainly wasn't Desmond Jennings. And that has opened the inning up for Boston. Three hits, two doubles. Got him. Foul tip into the mitt of Lobatone. Two gone for Stephen Drew now. And then maybe in keeping with what you said earlier about his curveball, just not there. Yeah, I was a little surprised he didn't go to the changeup or the curveball. He started off Saltamaki with a changeup, but he basically went right after those two hitters and said, "Here he is. I'm gonna try to rise it, ride it up to maybe you get another pop up." But having some separation right there with aggressive hitters, you know they want to drive the ball. You just did not choose that, that route. And Will Myers still getting his name chanted in this fourth inning. First postseason, Will Myers.
Stephen Drew. They're on his brother's old number. His brother JD spent five years here with the Red Sox. He rolls over one. Loney shovels it over and safe. And coming around the score is Gomes. Johnny Gomes hustling from second base. And he gives the Red Sox the lead on a little dribbler toward first. What great base running. He practiced that play. Didn't come into. That's going to be an infield hit and an RBI for Stephen Drew. He drives in a run from second on a ball that does not leave the infield. And yeah, Johnny he... Gomes had a sense about it. He was busting it off the bag at second base and he scores without a throw. Moore looked up and checked the umpire to see if he got the out before he turned to check the runner scoring. Red Sox had the lead three to two. Well there was a little indecision on the pitcher and you can understand it because that ball's hit more towards second base. Once the first baseman goes to get the ball you have to make that same beeline and you have to hit the corner of the bag. He overshot it and then by then it was too late and what that corner of the bag allows you to do is pivot turn back and, and make the play. You've got to anticipate that play before it happens. Everything happened really fast. The Red Sox hustle paid off. Will Middlebrooks two outs in the inning three runs in for Boston. All compounded by the horrible mistake out in right field. Johnny Gomes drove in two with a double. Infield hit an RBI by Drew. Stephen Drew as that takes a huge carom. He's around to score. And the Red Sox add to it. Four to two. That'll go as a double and an RBI for Middlebrooks. And now the eighth batter of the inning, Jacoby Ellsbury. Red Sox lead 4 2. Four runs are in on five hits. The difference between two solo home runs and the crooked number. You know, it, you rarely see a lot of series where this might happen, but it, an inning can get away with you, get away from you pretty quickly. And the next thing you know, when you come, have time to slow, slow it down and go, what just happened? I felt like I pitched pretty good, or I felt like I could have got out of that inning. This is where you really need a strikeout. Get in the dugout. See if the offense can pick up this inning. Matt Moore. Trying to get through this fourth. Little Brooks in scoring position for Ellsbury. Kobe has not played much since coming back from the injury. Injured that right foot on September 5th. He missed 28 games this year, and 16 of those 28 came in the month of September. So you got to figure his bat is still a little rusty, and even as he came back, only once did he play an entire game when he came back. And then the layoff from Sunday to today. Foul territory. Longoria will watch it in seats. We've seen a few change-ups from Moore today, but very little in the way of his breaking ball, and he's got a hard curve. There just must be something about it that he doesn't feel comfortable with today, and maybe those were the pitches he was bouncing up there before this inning started, John, that he's reluctant to go to for fear of some wild pitches. Yeah, but if nothing else, it'll it'll you got to change the eye level, not just up all the time. Down as well. Take care of two quadrants. Now 
Ellsbury asked for time, didn't get it right away, which he only finally awards timeout. It's a good lesson. He stepped out, didn't hear the timeout call, he jumped right back in there. Just because you ask for it doesn't mean you get it. Or reset. Eighth batter of the inning, Ellsbury. And a swing and a miss, and the ball gets away from Lobatone. And Ellsbury will reach. That'll be a strikeout, and what I assume will be a pass ball and a defensive meltdown in this inning by the Tampa Bay Rays with no errors on the board. You see Archer loosening quickly in the bullpen for the Rays. Been a long inning for Matt Moore. He deserves a better fate. There have been some hard hit balls, no question. And some misplays. As Victorino pulls one foul. It's been a long inning for John Lester, too, but you don't mind it. When your team rewards you for four runs, you got longer time in between innings to go out there and get loose again. But uh, a four to two lead is a lot better if you're having to go through a long inning. Matt Moore has two strikeouts in this inning. Five hits thus far. First and third, and a check on Ellsbury. Three primary base dealers for the Red Sox, and Ellsbury is the best of the group. And Lester has seen his club put four on the board and give him the lead. Feels like a great running chance for Boston. Victorino to right field, a base hit, and another run will score. Shane Victorino like a tennis backhand just serving one into right. And it's an RBI single. And it's 5-2 to two Boston. Well, we'll see if the Rays put the stall on here trying to get Archer in this game. The man who started the inning, Pedroia with a base hit to center field. That was the first hit of the game for the Red Sox. Matt Moore went through the first three. With no hits, a hit batter and a walk. And had a couple of strikeouts. But it has all fallen apart in this fourth. How about that? First time through the batting order, 0 for 9. The first three innings anyway. There's 32 pitches for in this inning. Troya did indeed get it going. Johnny Gomes had the big hit. Double off the monster and left. Drove in two runs. Tenth batter of the inning. And a 2 0 pitch is swung on and last foul. Cobb and David Price. Obviously, David Price not so much, but Alex Cobb really slowed the game down with off speed and curve balls and got out of a lot of jams in his previous game. Matt Moore is saying, Here's my fastball, and this is what I have confidence in, and I'm going to it a lot. Still with a hitter's count, Pedroia, and he swings, bouncing ball, Zobrist to end the inning. How about the Red Sox taking advantage five runs in they have the lead.